Good morning. Um, a couple of our buddies, our gardening buddies, Terry King and uh, Haughty Hugh, links in the uh, description below, um, the fellow, fellow gardening uh, revolutionaries, are, uh, are challenging people to a bit of a, a bit of an experiment. Now, as you know, we usually put the bums down and the snouts up when we're planting our garlic. But uh, there's an upside down bulb growing challenge. I'll put the hashtag down below for it and we're taking part. thought might as well do it for a laugh. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting three garlics pointing nose down and three garlics pointing bums down and, and snout up as we usually do. And we're going to see what the difference is. I know on these allotment plots a couple of years ago, about three or four years ago, there was an old guy who planted onions upside down. And everybody was laughing at him until the actual harvest. And when he harvested them, there was no difference. In fact, he got some really big onions, planting them upside down. Now, as I say, it's an experiment. We're just doing it for a bit of a laugh. But yeah, Haughty Hugh and Terry King, this one's for you boys. All right, see you in a bit. So that is a standard sized one foot by 10 inch. Tesco cut flower bucket um, that we're growing all the other onions and garlic in inside the polytunnel. So it's exactly the same growing medium and container. And these are our Casablanca garlic. Now all I'm going to be doing now is putting those in half upside down, half right way up into the uh, into the growing medium, which is the clover compost with chicken manure pellets in it chicken manure pellets for about three or four inches in the soil below the top of the soil surface and then the, the as I always do the top three or four inches I don't put any feed in and I let the uh, the roots go down and seek out the feed but yeah let's get cracking on with that right so as you can see there they're all of a similar size the cloves the left hand side ones I'm going to put in upside down and the right hand side ones I'm going to put in a right way up. We'll do it now live. So you know we're not, we're not cheating. There's the snout which would usually stick up. That's going down. And these ones. Are going to be going up so exactly the same depth to them only one's upside down on the left and on the right they're the right way up all I'm going to do now is just cover them up with the soil and get some uh, vermiculite on the top of them in the same way that we do them every time and then I'm going to label up which is the left and which is the right which is the upside down and which is the right way up and jobs are good all right USD USD upside down RWU right way up and uh, oh I've done this put Cass on the back Cass for Casablanca oh Cass for Casablanca 16th of the 10th 20 let's get it on the back of the other one as well so yeah let's see how they get on upside down bulb growing challenge I think it's called I'll put the correct title in the uh, hashtag below. Right, good stuff. Get some vermiculite on top. There they go. Going to get them into a watering tray now, like we've done with the other ones over there. Who will see? We're going to see, aren't we? Mmm. I'm intrigued. I mean, it only costs us three three cloves there. They're about 8p each when you work it out, the cloves. So it's cost us 24p to do this experiment. I'm checking it that the ones on the right-hand side that are planted right way up, they should be fine. But the upside-down ones, who knows? I mean, intuition would tell you that it's probably not going to be good, is it, that? But let's find out. Does it matter which way you put them in the ground? Mmm. There they are, in the watering tray. On the bench. Now, 
as well at the back there, I don't know if you can see that, you know what that is? It's a golden Virginia tobacco plant that Mix give us, he's growing his own tobacco for personal use obviously. In fact, I might ask him if he'll show us. So yeah, we did put those into the watering trays and uh, they're off and running now. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with those. What I did, it didn't film though. I did a, I did a little bit of a, an extra clip um, with them in the watering trays. And also behind them was a um, Virginian tobacco plant that we were gifted by Magical McDarbyshire from Old McDarby's Farm. And I was showing you that. So um, that's missing from this video for some reason. It didn't record it. But what I did record was the growth and the plantation of tobacco that Mick's got next door on plots 34 and 35. So go and have a look at that. This is coming up right now. You'll be uh, you'll be surprised the amount of leafage he's got. There he is. Magical McDarbyshire and Cooperman. Old McDarby's farm. Check them out. And check these out. Come the zombie apocalypse, they know where to come for a smoke. <laughs> these are all tobacco plants. The seeds are really, really tiny. They're like nigella seeds when you when you look at the seed. But um, these have been growing now for probably about three and a half months, four months. Now, because we're going into the winter period, he's a bit dubious because he doesn't think they're going to last the, 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 the test of winter. Um, because they are a sort of temperate temperature uh, plant. They need a long growing season. But as you can see from the leaves there, a couple of these are like two feet long, the leaves. They will grow to like four or five feet. They, they turn into flaming trees, apparently. Quite tall, like about six or seven feet tall, which I didn't know. But that's inside of his um, of his own version of the tiki tunnel. Back to back with mine. And they seem to be doing okay in here now. I mean it's dropping down. We had some mild we've had some mild frosts. And uh, they've lived through that inside the tunnels. But yeah, the gorgeous sort of mottled green leaf to him. And uh, I'll show you the ones he's got inside his uh, four millimeter clear twin wall polycarbonate setup. There's the professor. You all right, Paul? Hello, Paul. So, so there's the four millimeter clear twin wall polycarbonate greenhouse that Mix put together there. Again, using the old trampoline frame setup that we use with straight bars going across to, to give it the extra length. Um, it's a cracking little setup, really, and I've never seen anything anything like it. To be honest, it's like an Anderson shelter, but made out of the uh, the clear polycarbonate. We put some uh, sheeting over the top of it about three or four weeks ago because it was leaking around where the joints are. You can get joints that that sort of pin them together, but. With the winds and everything last year, it was blowing them about when we had the strong winds. So that's been braced onto the the plastic sheeting, as you can see, and hopefully that should 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 stand the test of the winter storms. Anyway, inside here, this is where the tomatoes were. He had a cracking tomato crop, but about a month ago, transplanted the tobacco plants into the Anderson shelter. And uh, I mean they're growing, they're growing very well. It's probably what's staking up and that one. It's flopping over a bit, isn't it? That one. But yeah, I mean, quite a crop of backa. Golden Virginia tobacco. And he's just like I say, he's just give us one of his plants now just to have a go in our greenhouse. But some of these are getting quite tall and big now. They're, they're, they're really big leaves. Um, Mick will know better than I will about what you do once they're, um, you know, once they're ready for harvesting and cropping. The slugs love it though. I mean, the slugs love this stuff, as you can see. And it's a constant battle mix having and and, uh, and Henry are having with the slugs at the moment. You see all the eggshells in there, um, etc. 
to try and prevent the slugs and put copper tape around there. But they love it so much that they always try and find a way into there and uh, and get chomping. There's not too much slug damage at the moment, but uh, as I say, it's something that if you are growing tobacco, you need to keep an eye on. They love it. You can imagine chewing the backy. No chewing backy. But yeah, they're looking good, aren't they, then, mate? Okay. Really good. Now we're going to roll up a small. Like that Che Guevara. Or Fidel Castro with his big cigars. But yeah, great, isn't it? An experiment. Fingers crossed they'll last through winter, but you never know. It's Like I say, it's a, the, the more of a, t of a temperate, warmer climate that these come from, so you never know. Two times next spring, Golden Leaf and uh, Golden Virginia and Amber Leaf. Golden Virginia and Amber Leaf, yeah. Got the seeds ready. So there's loads of different varieties of tobacco and uh, gold, gold, Virginia. Golden Virginia. Sorry, you let them flower up, save the seeds off them as well. Save the seeds off them. Yeah, fine. Like I said, fingers crossed they'll, 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 they'll come through the winter, but you never know, do you? We'll get a cigarette out of them. <laughs> you should get a couple of fags off them, couldn't you? But uh, yeah, yeah, you, uh, you hang them up, don't you? you? You cut the leaves off and you hang them up. Yeah, uh, you know, keep them for about two months. Yeah, They're like a humid environment sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. And um, and then you chop them up into the back here, shred them up, and smoke it. That's that's how it works. Well, we'll see, won't we, in a couple of months, like. Right? Well, next year, hopefully, we'll have oats, barley, tobacco, and uh, food, so we'll have beer, smoke, and food. <laughs> don't need them. <laughs> don't, don't need the, the Illuminati, then, do you, boys and girls? Yeah. Cracking stuff. I gave Mick a bit of a lift with this at the start at lockdown, but this is the officer's mess room. It's an extension to the the original shed, which is down there. And it's all from scrap materials, this, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. It's a cracking little... It look, I think that looks like a Viking ship, that, on top. I've come up with an old reef, an old uh, bungalow, I think. Yeah. That cap end on the, on the end there. Yeah, these are off a conservatory, aren't they, these? No, I mean these, you know, these tiles on top. They're oh, yeah, yeah, there's uh, ridge tiles on top, isn't there? Off an old bungalow that was getting demolished. Yeah, this was off the camp, wasn't it? Old conservatory. Yeah. No, and it's doing the job. Everywhere. That's like three quarter inch um, clear polycarbonate, at that, thicker. Yeah, it's in here. Oh, in summertime, it's red hot in here, isn't it? It's too hot. Yeah. You have to have all doors open, back doors there, the emergency exit. <laughs> Sink down there, yeah. brewing setups. I see you've got a, um, a barbecue. He's even a barbecue there, it's all set. And look at that in the corner. Oh, just cleaned out, it's just burned out now. Just about to set that off, getting some book, getting the fire going again. And that's what your mate, his mate made him that. Um, just a, like a mild steel one, and uh, and it works like a charm. You'll see in a bit. Well, I'll, I'll show you when smoke's coming out of the top. Looks like we've got a new pulp, and that's on the go. And we're making plant food. And he's making plant fruit from the ash. Yeah, because the tobacco plant's up there. There's the ash pan, that's going to go on the, on the back of plants. Bit of pot ash. And there's the flue that goes up there. It's been leaded around as well. Use fire retardant foam and lead around there. And, that'll, and that's the flue, quite a tall flue. You'll see in a bit when he fires it up. We've got these sliding windows in, didn't we? As well, mate. Yeah. Yeah. To observe nature. Here he is. Hey. Sometimes it's thick. Yeah. And there you go. Well, yeah, that was all recycled material, that, isn't it? Everything. The yeah. full lot. That's what we want. Reuse, repurpose, recycle, boys and girls. Recycle chairs are your old folks home. Yeah, these are from the old folks home. Cost me a fiver in a donation for them chairs. 
It's not bad, is it? <laughs> There's merry old England. There'll always be an England. Fantastic, man. Good stuff. Now, I promised to show you the smoke coming out of that, but um, unfortunately, I got a phone call from work and uh, I had to sort that out. Um, but um, and forgot to, to film it afterwards. But trust me, it's like Stevenson's rocket that flew pipe when it's on the go, and uh, no smoke's coming back into the um, into the bill, and it's all getting flued up through the through the, the scaffold tube that he's got there. He has to clean it every now and again and, and make sure it's not getting blocked. But it works like a charm, and so all through winter we'll be toasting ourselves in the if we can, if we're allowed to, with all the lockdown carry on that's going on. We can actually go inside that. Um, now, so we always keep our social distances and stuff like that. We do nip on from time to time to each other's plots, dropping things off for each other. But we keep a distance. We don't we don't sort of touch or, or or whatever or come too close to each other. Keep your six feet distances and stuff like that. But yeah, so unfortunately, I couldn't film the smoke coming out of that. But um, it does work. <coughs> Excuse me. That was Magical Michael. Now, um, keep grooming your heads down. Check them out, actually. I'll put the link in the uh, description below as, uh, as well as uh, as Terry King and uh, Haughty Hugh. And you can check them out as well. Both good growers. In fact, all good growers. All three of them are good and entertaining. So check them out. And remember, keep growing with your head down. And uh, thanks for tuning in to the Little Farmer's Farm. I've been Guru Mafinda. You've been fabulous, fantastic, fragrant and beautiful as always. And uh, we'll catch you later on. Have a good weekend. It's Friday now, so uh, don't get too drunk. And uh, toodle pip. Take care, boys and girls. Bye-bye.